competitors here range from professional triathletes to lawyers to doctors and many teachers. But there's only one adventure racer who happens to be a female firefighter. I'm not a triathlete. I'm a Rottweiler competing with, with a bunch of greyhounds. Robin Benacasa has started and finished this race three times before. Iron Man taught me how to be hard, how to be just mentally hard and to suffer. And I took that and brought it to adventure racing. They have traveled here from every corner of the world. For 10 nonstop days and nights, they must hike, mountain climb, paddle, ride, and race through some of the most captivating yet dangerous terrain in one of the last great wilderness areas on Earth. Are you guys ready for an awesome adventure this afternoon? <laughs> All right, today we're going to have an amazing adventure. We're going to explore Australia, New Zealand, Ecuador, but more importantly, we're going to explore the human spirit and the little things that allow groups of ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things together. I'm thrilled to share with you what I've learned from some of the world's greatest extreme teammates about what it takes to get to that next highest peak, time and time again, no matter how difficult the challenge, no matter how tough the odds. The secret? Well, the higher you get on any mountain, what happens to the terrain? It gets steeper, right? And the steeper it gets, the harder it is to tackle it alone. So your continued high performance is not going to be a matter of trying harder. It's not going to be a matter of reaching up. It's going to come from reaching out and creating true human synergy with the people around you. Now, what's human synergy and how is it different from teamwork? Well, human synergy is teamwork basically supersized. And human synergy says that we're not just walking side by side together towards a common goal. Sometimes we're literally carrying one another. And that's what we're here to talk about today, helping you build your businesses through human synergy. And we're gonna do it the fun way. I'm gonna teach it to you the most fun way I know, and that's through the sport of adventure racing. On the ridge to Eton Peak, the lead teams are learning that things are not always as they seem. There's a fake, false summit. It'll be soul destroying when they get there and realize they've only gone a third of the way and now need to descend and climb higher and higher than ever before. It just takes such courage to overcome the expectation of something being easy and then to find out it's really, really hard. That's what Eco Challenge is all about though. Digging deep in your soul and keeping going. It's a race about character. I remember that whole entire section being a very, very difficult one for me. I was pushed to my limit. It was incredibly hot. My feet hurt so, so, so bad. The terrain was really uneven, and the section was a lot longer than we ever dreamed it was. So my expectations of having a nice short caving section and a run back to the beach became this six-hour night marathon on really, really bad feet with a team right on our heels. And, and I want to ask you guys, what were the, the toughest part? It was just so mentally hard. I remember one night in particular, we were laying on the jungle floor with not only bugs crawling around beneath us, but leeches falling from the trees onto us like rain. Oh, my ping, God. Ping, 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 all over us. Oh, my God. We have the uh, Eco Challenge winners. This is an endurance race that takes place uh, in Borneo or exotic locations all over the world. It's created by the same guy who brought you Survivors, Mark Burnett. And uh, they are on the roof right now, uh, preparing for a big rappel down the side of our building. There they are right there. That's uh, Ian, Robin, Mike, and Isaac. How you doing, guys? The most interesting thing about that race is we weren't one of the teams picked to win. We had never raced together before, and we were merely above average athletes. But somehow, as we made our way that 500 kilometers, six nonstop days and nights together, side by side, on mountain bikes and native canoes and on foot using just a map and compass to guide our way. We realized that we had something pretty special as a team. Our outcomes were so much greater than the sum of our individual strengths and we weren't just walking side by side towards that common goal. We were figuratively and literally carrying one another. And at the end of the race, when we had shocked the endurance racing world and won the world championships, we realized we had discovered something pretty magical, a formula if you will, not just for winning adventure races, but for peak performance in every aspect of our lives. Now, before you think this is another crazy sports analogy, tell me if 
This doesn't describe your real life if you didn't know I was describing a sport. Okay, you've got small teams of men and women trying to make it through a seemingly endless series of checkpoints towards a nearly impossible goal and changing conditions under extreme time pressures and trying to do it better than anybody else in the industry. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> Commitment doesn't start at the start line when everyone's standing there in their perfectly lovely uniforms and there's no dirt on them and there's no leeches in their nose and their, their backpacks and their hair is coiffed and they all match each other and they're high-fiving each other. That's not when commitment starts. Commitment starts about 15 hours into an adventure race when it's in the middle of the night, you got sideways hail, you're covered with dirt, you've fallen over a few times, you've broken a tooth out. I mean, this is where commitment starts, is when the fun stops. Commitment really starts when it's not as much fun anymore. When you're getting home from work late at night, when you haven't made your calls for that day, when you just want to get one or two more in for that day and you just don't feel like it. That's where commitment starts. Life away from the training and the competition can be just as intense for Robin. You see, this is her real job as a firefighter. We can be called to anything at any time and we have to be ready for that. And that's what I love about being a firefighter. But it's nice to know that as an athlete and as someone who is strong and has a good endurance background that if the you-know-what does hit the fan that <laughs> I'm going to be able to carry that ladder you know, to the window. I'm going to be able to carry a person out of there and that's a good feeling. I actually had a case where we were fighting the fires here in San Diego where it became so obvious to me that the human connection is the strongest connection on earth. Because at the end of the day, we don't work for a company. We work for people. And I was out fighting these October fires. We were the first in strike team on the morning of October 23rd at 4 a.m. Rancho Bernardo was on fire. Four o'clock in the morning, I'm standing there on the corner with houses burning all around me and one fire engine, 500 gallons of water, and three other people going, oh my God, now what do we do? I remember so vividly the moment that I made this connection. I was just fighting house fires, you know, house to house to house. And all of a sudden, I made this human connection because I was pulling my hose across the front lawn of a house. And for whatever reason, these people had taken all their family pictures out from, as they were running down the hallway maybe, and they had put them on the front lawn, maybe to save them from the fire in case their house burned down. So I'm pulling my hose across the front lawn of this house, and I noticed all these family pictures. And all of a sudden, something clicked in my brain. I was like, you know what, I'm, just, I'm not working for the San Diego Fire Department right now. I am working for this family right now. This family needs me to save their house. And I worked so much harder on that house than I had on any of the other ones before it because I knew these people. I was connected to these people. We saved that house because of the power of knowing those people. And the neatest thing was, we actually went back the next day after everything had calmed down, the fire had moved on, and the whole family was standing there on their front lawn holding their kids' hands, looking at their house with tears coming down their eyes when we pulled up. And it was such a great moment because we actually got to complete that circle of that connection with those people. And in that moment I said, you know what? This connection, this human connection is the strongest force on earth. So continue to build your teams by making those human connections. Team builders are ruled by a hope of success and not the fear of failure. So very often we're looking behind us just trying to stay ahead, worrying, am I gonna fail? Is this gonna be okay? I used to have a teammate that whenever I looked behind me, because I was a racer that always focused on just staying ahead of the competition, you don't win races by just staying ahead of the competition. You win races by doing what it takes to win races. And every time I turned around, he'd always <laughs> take my head and spin it around and go, winning is that way. <laughs> and pretty soon I came to realize, you know what, it's not about not losing, it's about doing what it takes to win. This photo that you're looking at of a team of four people, it appears that it's a team just of four. That's the number one and number two team out in front of the race collaborating on the map. Then as we get to the finish line, we're only battling for number one and number two. So strategically we think, see a world full of teammates instead of that world full of competitors. Winning does not have to be mutually exclusive. This is the Japanese team in the 1997 Eco Challenge in Australia. They were about halfway through the pack. They were doing really well. They wanted to be the first Japanese team ever to finish an Eco Challenge. And the girl on their team had ripped her Achilles tendon. And all she could do was drag her foot behind her. And they had to get up and over a 3,000 meter mountain and then hike 13 miles before they got into kayaks to paddle about 20 hours to the finish. And these guys said, we want to show the world how a Japanese team performs. When Nohoko finds she can walk no more, 
she and her companions discover the true meaning of teamwork. Hi, uh, you aren't going to believe this. Team Eastwind taking turns carrying their female teammate up Bartle Frere. No lie, over. They had been carrying her on their back for about six hours. She got off and with her uh, walking stick was able to walk part way and they put her back on their back when they got to a steep, uh, another steep area over. We have a proverb in Japanese that says, once you fall, you are closer to death, but not yet dead. So I think this was a test for us to never give up, even under the toughest of odds. Team Eastwind are the epitome of what Eco Challenge really stands for. Most people couldn't even walk over Mount Bartle Freer. For them to carry that woman, over that entire mountain. It's incredible. Pretty amazing. And I love ending with that image of those guys carrying the girl to the finish line. Because it's not about, hey, look at what superstars we were to carry her. They actually put her on their shoulders, right? Because she was a hero for letting them do that. And it reminds me that as a leader, we don't achieve our highest levels by standing on our teammates' backs to get ahead. We achieve our greatest heights when we put our teammates on our shoulders. And as a leader, we don't inspire our teammates by getting out in front and showing them how awesome we are. We inspire our teammates by putting them on our shoulders and showing them how amazing they are. May you always have the courage to dare such mighty things that you can't accomplish them alone and the wisdom to put together the world-class teams that will push, pull, tug, tow, and carry one another to those finish lines. Are you guys ready to race? You guys ready to race? Five, four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> She's amazing, amazing, yeah.